is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, as Crystal said, my name is Daniel. I'm Daniel Strative. I am one of the trainers and consultants here for Pragmatic Works. If anyone has any issues hearing me or any uh, any technical issues that you guys uh, encounter, please uh, please let me know, and we'll we'll do what we can to make sure we get you guys taken care of. So, as Crystal said, uh, this is the introduction to Microsoft Flow course. So we're going to go over some of the basics of Flow, exactly what it is, what it does, how we can use it in our our day-to-day -day life in our, our everyday business and how we can leverage it to uh, to, to make that business easier. Uh, so from the polls that we had here, it looks like a lot of the uh, a lot a lot of you guys are are Power BI users, um, which is is to be expected. That's it's pretty understandable. Power BI is currently the the most popular uh, segment of of the Power platform, but Flow is a part of that platform as well, along with Power Apps and all of them kind of uh, work together to leverage us some, some great, great uh, automation here. So let's let's get right into it, guys. Um, so as I said, I'm Daniel Strative. Uh, there's my contact information there on, on that first slide. So if you guys wanna, wanna find me on LinkedIn or you wanna tweet me, uh, you can find me at uh, Superpower BI or you can check out my blog at superpowermybi.com. Not a whole lot of blogging going on yet, mainly been focused on building new courses and working on some uh, some uh, new content here for the, the company. Um, I am one of the, the newest trainers here. I've only been here for about three or four months. So thanks a lot for, for joining me for this course, guys. And I really hope that we, uh, we get some good information out of it. Okay, so when we talk about Microsoft Flow, where's my, I lost my PowerPoint controls here. There they are. All right, when we talk about Microsoft Flow, uh, wh what is it? And what problems does it solve? Let's talk about that first and foremost, right? So flow is workflow automation. Uh, you're going to use flow to automate those routine and repetitive tasks, the kinds of things that you're doing day in and day out, the things that are taking up time, that are taking up your efforts. Now, uh, why should we automate? I mean, it, it seems kind of obvious, but of course we want to increase our productivity. We want to increase our productivity and we to do to do so we're going to to utilize flow we're going to utilize uh, all of the the connectors and the processes that we can use within flow and the office 365 and dynamics 365 suite and it will allow us to uh, to make sure we're we're making the most of our time right because i i like to think of it this way let's let's consider for a second uh, everyone always says time is money right so let's let's take that to a, another level here so if we say time is money and let's say we spend a bit of time every day uh, get, getting through our, our basic daily kind of menial or uh, uh, tedious tasks, right? So if we instead say, all right, we're gonna spend that amount of time every single day, and that's kind of like putting money into a savings account, like every week or every month or what have you. So eventually, sure, yeah, you're going to have an amount of money uh, or in time, we're gonna have an amount of work done, right? But let's instead consider this like an investment. Let's say that, Rather than putting it in a savings account, we're going to invest it into stocks or into bonds. We're going to put it in the market, and we're going to try to get a return from that. So what flow and automation can do for us is take that time. We're going to invest a, a little chunk of time here to build our flows, to build our automated processes, and then that in, in turn is going to return to us all of the time that we would have spent every one of those days or weeks or months doing. So it's just going to help us. It's just going to return to us all of that time that we'd be wasting. So automation really is is absolutely imperative in, in today's uh, society. Um, it can also help us eliminate our inconsistencies. So the great thing about that is since we are using a, a an automated process, uh, we're using a program, we're using a code to do something for us over and over, we're kind of eliminating the, the human element there, at least as long as we build it correctly, right? So if we build a flow and we automate correctly, then we're not gonna have any issues going forward, no matter how many times that is produced. Of course, if we, if we do, then it, it will know. And that's the great thing about flow and automation, but 
no matter how many times we, we, we go through this, no matter how many times we repeat the same thing, then we're, we're going to have uh, the same result. So that's definitely great. And of course, um, taking time away from our day to focus on these tedious things, that, that doesn't help us with our, our business critical issues, doesn't help us with the important stuff. So uh, this allows us to spend more time to focus on the more important things. Okay, so real world use cases. So let's consider here the types of, of cases in which we would we would want to use this. <clears throat> so let's say uh, we're talking about the power platform here, and we're talking about uh, most of you most of you are, are Power BI users, and I'm not sure how much if any of you uh, have used Power Apps. I think I saw a little bit there, but it is not quite the, the, the most popular one right now. But Power BI is is definitely the powerhouse, and then Power Apps is a an awesome tool that allows uh, non-developers to build apps internally. So you can build an app that will uh, further automate things and make things a bit easier. So it's especially, we like to say, if there's something you're doing on paper, there's more than likely a way for you to turn that into a power app. Rather than wasting the paper, rather than wasting, wasting that same input over and over and over, you can build a power app that would allow you to do it for you. And then, uh, of course, Microsoft Flow, which we're talking about here. So these are the three main components of the Power Platform. Now, let's say that someone within your, your organization, uh, a business user, developed a Power App. And that Power App was designed to submit expense reports. You have expense reports, um, and you're trying to submit them through Power Apps because it's a, a bit easier than just you know filling it on paper or, or using a, a third-party service in this instance. Maybe you just wanted to avoid that. So let's say once that expense is submitted through the app, then Microsoft Flow will send a notification, as soon as it's submitted, will send a notification to anyone that might need to approve those expenses. And then even further, you could take that information from Flow, that is after it's been approved, you could take that information, uh, you could say send it to a SharePoint drive, you could send it to OneDrive, or to, to wherever your, your data might be stored, and then you could use Power BI to pull that data and uh, build some analytics and, and build some reports and dashboards to get some information about those expenses. So using the Power Platform as a whole, it really can be all-encompassing in getting you some new insights, saving you some time, and saving you some money. So it can definitely be a, a, a super powerful. All, all of these can be great, great tools. So the, the business problems that, that Flow might give us solutions for. <clears throat> when we're looking at uh, our workforce, we're considering, uh, and we talk about workforce multiplication here, we're considering the idea that usually in, in the past, you would need a developer to build you some kind of process and uh, or to build an app for talking about power apps. But especially here in Flow, we would need them to build some, some sort of process for us. But in this case, using Flow, you, you can do this with non-technical staff. You don't need developers to do this for you. Flow is all drag and drop. It's, it's all UI-based functionality. Uh, it doesn't require code. You can add some more functionality with code. You can go a bit deeper. You can customize. You can build some really powerful stuff. But the majority of Flow is done just with that drag and drop UI. It is really powerful. And then, of course, the systems that are integrated with Flow, we have 225 plus connectors. That's growing all the time. There are hundreds of connectors. And those connectors are just the, the different ways that Flow leverages the services, be they Microsoft, like O365, or Dynamics, or something else. It could, could be SharePoint. It could be MailChimp. It could be Outlook. It could be uh, a myriad of different connections. And we'll, we'll take a look at those soon. Uh, you also have custom and template solutions. So you could just jump into Flow, grab a template. It's already built for you. It's Someone's already wanted to do the same thing you're doing, and they went ahead and they built a template for you. So you can literally just grab that, sign in, and go. Or you have a more custom problem. You, you need to kind of figure this out yourself. You can go ahead and build a custom solution in Flow very easily. It's, it's very easy to do so. And we're going to do that here today. And then regulation, uh, there's, uh, you, can, you can kind of generate some administration and compliance with Flow, which is great. And there, there is a, a data loss prevention policy here in place. So the, the, the focus, like I said before, it doesn't necessarily require you to be a, a technical uh, person. It doesn't require you to necessarily be a developer. 
uh, or something of that sort. Instead, you could be a business user and you could be a specialist, um, be it on, on O365 or be it Dynamics, uh, something like that. If As long as you have any kind of experience with Office, and even if you, you don't, I'm sure you could you could build it pretty pretty easily. Office is uh, is pretty user friendly. But if you have any kind of experience with that, Flow is going to come very easily to you. Uh, it's just made to work very well with it. So we're going to to see how we can just leverage a lot of our O365 tools and some of the Dynamics tools. We won't really touch on here, but there's definitely a lot of that as well. Um, but just how we can use Office and, and Flow. Uh, without having really any kind of technical background. Logic Apps is very similar to Flow. Uh, it's definitely a bit more advanced. It's more so for our IT professionals and our developers, and it's more so based in Visual Studio and Microsoft Azure, uh, which we're not really gonna talk about here, but that's just much deeper on the data side, much deeper on the development side, and you can do some really powerful stuff there, but this will allow more of the user base, more of the people in that organization to, to automate what they want to automate. So the extended benefits. Now, we have our, our IT developers, uh, when we want to get into our highly advanced flows, our more business critical flows, it might be best to bring in our IT or developers, to bring in some people who might have, say, some Logic Apps experience or something like that. It might be better to bring them in when you have a flow that, that has just a lot, of, a lot of steps, a lot of uh, intricacies, or if that flow is incredibly critical to your business, say uh, if, if you are you have sales or you have numbers, you have finances that are, are resting on a flow, you might want to make sure that you get some people who have that, that greater experience in there because they might understand some things that go a bit deeper. There's some, some issues that might exist. Flow is still pretty young, so of course there's going to be a little bit of, uh, of uh, some growing pains there, some, some initial uh, issues, uh, they're, they're very few and far between. But th there's, of course, with any any new technology, you're going to encounter some things like that. Logic apps, any any flow, any flow that's made, you, it can be converted to a logic app. So anything that we make in flow, if you wanted to take it to a more advanced level, if you have somebody in your organization, or if you yourself are a developer and you're experienced with logic apps, you can build something in flow, and then you could essentially convert it to a logic app. <clears throat> All right, so the different parts of a flow, let's talk about that really briefly here. We have triggers and we have actions. Those are the two main core pieces of a flow. So we have uh, the trigger, which is exactly what it sounds like. It sets the flow in motion. It gets the flow started. So it could be multiple different things here. It could be an event. It could be a, a button or it could be a scheduled trigger. So an event could be like, say, you get an email or there's uh, a, a, an event or, or a, a calendar item added to your calendar, a schedule. Uh, scheduled meeting, something like that. Um, a button, we could actually use the Flow app. And uh, on our mobile phone, we could add a button there to just hit a button and immediately trigger a process. For instance, um, you could build a button that would allow your employees to uh, immediately add an item to a SharePoint list to track their location and time. Let's say you have a lot of contractors, you have a lot of traveling workers, something like that. They could have a button, they just press, that immediately creates an item in the SharePoint list for you so you know this is their location. It could have their address there, it could have their latitude and longitude, whatever you'd like, and it could have the date and time there as well. And then there's uh, scheduled triggers as well. So you could just say, I want at 9 a.m. every weekday, Monday through Friday, I want to see any of my uh, approvals that are still open or any new SharePoint items that have been added, something like that. So you could just set a specific time, a specific day, uh, or you know, once a month, anything like that, you could have it trigger a flow at those specific times. So actions are just exactly what happens after that. After the flow is triggered, the actions are what, what occurs from there on. So whenever uh, you say get an email, you could take whatever attachments there and you could add them to OneDrive. So that's, that's an idea of an action and we'll, we'll get into those deeper uh, here as well. So templates, I talked briefly about templates. There are a lot of templates. There are hundreds and hundreds of templates out there, probably thousands, and they're, they're growing all the time. People are always making more. Some of them are made by Microsoft. Some of them are made by other people and third parties, and Microsoft just kind of adopts them. Uh, but you can find templates in this community. There are a lot of them. So we can, uh, we're gonna take a look at that here as well. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let's take a look at Flow and 
just kind of go through the, the basics here. So to do so, I'm going to uh, just stop my slideshow here. And I'm going to pick up my Flow website. All right, so I, in my browser, I'm, I'm at uh, flow.microsoft.com. You could also type in Microsoft uh, flow.com. They both redirect to the same place. So here uh, we are, are at Flow's homepage. And we can see um, there's there's a couple things for us here on the landing page as soon as we get here. So we have uh, a couple of things here, like the feature template collections. Uh, these just kind of give us different little collections of flows that we could use to uh, kind of look at a specific section of, of, of work or a specific type of business, something like that. Just kind of some different ideas that you could use. Below that, we have our popular services. So this is our, our most common used uh, services for Flow. So anything from SharePoint, O365, OneDrive, et cetera. We could just click on these to look at those. Uh, below that, we get a little bit of information about uh, the different types of flows, but we'll, we'll talk about that shortly. And below that, we see those templates we were talking about. So here's some of those. We have our featured ones, email, productivity, et cetera. So we can see those here. Okay, so uh, it, we can navigate through this and, and take a look at a bit more uh, of the website. So I want to show you guys just kind of the most commonly used page here, which would be the My Flows page. So if you go to the My Flows page on the left here by clicking this, this tab, that would open up your, your My Flows page where if you had flows already created, they, they would be here. If you don't, then, well, it, it'll look like this where it says you don't have any flows. So you, it just goes, goes ahead and gives you a button there that you could just click this to explore the templates, and you could just choose from those to start building a flow. At the top here, you could just click New to create a template or to create a flow. You could go from blank or from a template here. Uh, you could also import some flows, and here we have our team flows button. So this would be anything that is is shared with you or anything that's a part of your team. You could see those flows there as well. And then business process flows, we're not really going to touch on that here. That's more of an advanced topic um, that requires a higher level license. Uh, and uh, that's that's definitely a, a bit higher in, in the in the dollar range. But uh, business process flows can be useful for just kind of automating some of the business processes and unifying uh, over, over that. So um, this is just kind of a quick look at the, the MyFlows page. Um, we can also take a look at the templates here and just get an idea of what those look like. And we're, we're actually gonna, gonna jump into some templates here in, in, in just a moment. So uh, I'm gonna go back into SharePoint here briefly. I'm gonna start this slideshow back over. There it is. Okay. So when we're talking about templates, uh, we're talking about a, a flow that has been pre-built. It's been pre-built either by Microsoft or by a third party. So a template would just be that trigger and all of the actions involved that have already been made. You can just select that, that template and immediately uh, log into whatever connectors are necessary, change whatever you'd like to change. If there's certain specific folders you'd like things to go to, for instance, or a specific email that you'd like to use, you can change what, what's necessary and just immediately start using that flow. A lot of flows don't even necessarily require that much work. Some of them you could literally just add it to your, your flow account and just start using it right away. But there are quite a few that would require you to at least log into those, those connectors, and we'll look at that here in a second. So yeah, it's just a pre-built flow. It's just ready for you to go. Uh, you can modify the flows, uh, like I, I kind of touched on there. You can modify the flows uh, to fit your needs in particular. So be it you could take that, that template and you could say, this is pretty good, but there's something I want to change. And you could either add a new connector or you could add a condition, which we'll talk about briefly here soon, or, or something like that. You could, you could modify these as you'd like. And another great thing about templates is you can actually inspect a template, see how it was built, open it up and take a look at that so that you can learn from it yourself. You can say, 
oh, well, I don't know how to do this. I, I want to be able to do this myself and maybe build upon that or use this in an, another flow of mine. You could inspect these templates, take a look at how they're made, take a look at maybe even some of the, the expressions that they use and kind of use those elsewhere. So it can be very useful there as well. And finally, you can upload your templates to the Flow community to share them. That's exactly how you can see other people's templates here besides just Microsoft's. You can also create templates yourself that if you wanted to share them, you absolutely could. So different categories of templates. Uh, these are uh, just on that templates page there that we were just looking at. You have your all flows featured, approval flows, uh, which we'll talk about here soon, where you can uh, just start an approval process just through flow itself, which is pretty great. Um, you have buttons, which we talked about briefly. You can have that on your phone. You can just press a button and get some different information or start a different flow. You have uh, email trigger flows, stuff like that. So there's all kinds of different flows here that we could use. And this is just kind of the different categories of those templates. Um, you can search the templates by service. So if you're looking for specifically Outlook or you're looking for MailChimp or you're looking for Twitter or something like that, you could search the templates for uh, that service in particular and see all the templates related to that service. So the connectors. Um, we talked about this just briefly a, a moment ago. The connectors are the way that we use those services, the way that Flow leverages those services like Office, like Twitter, um, like RSS feeds, et cetera, to, uh, to create triggers and actions to either start a Flow or uh, actually carry out actions within Flow. So those connectors are just the way that we use those different services. So connections between them. You have to have an account for those connectors to use them. You have to sign into that account, and we'll show you how we do that here in just a second, but you do have to have an account for that connector and be signed into it. Some connectors are not available to free users. So you can use Flow for free. Uh, if you have an, an O365 uh, license, if you have an Office uh, 365 license, then, then you'll likely already have a Flow One plan, but you can use them when they're if you're a free user. Uh, however, there are some connectors that you cannot use. Um, they will be premium connectors. It will say premium on the icon, uh, and we'll, we'll probably see it here in just a second. You just can't use those when you're a free user, um, and there are uh, some limitations to that, but it, it's really only specific connections that you can't use uh, if they are premium, and most of the time, it's not going to be an issue. If it is, then you, you'll likely know, or it will probably be something within your organization that they, they would know. So this is just a, a visual to show you guys. There are a lot of connectors. Uh, this is a handful of them. They're, they're constantly growing. There's 200 plus, and, and there's more and more all the time. But this is to show you, give you an idea. It's kind of supposed to be a little overwhelming. There are tons of potential connectors we could use here in Flow. OK, so let's go ahead and actually build a Flow using a template. <clears throat> So I'm going to go back to the Flow site in MicrosoftFlow.com or Flow.Microsoft.com. And uh, if, if you close your browser and you're navigating back there, you'll probably be on the home page here. Again, just to get to templates, we just go to our, our connectors page here. Oh, excuse me, the templates page here, not the connectors. <laughs> the templates page. So uh, if we want to see our templates, we could just go there. So let's go ahead and navigate to our templates page. You could also just scroll down on that home page, and you'll see some templates there as well. All right, so when we're here, like I said, we can see these are just kind of all the flows. These are the most used flows. This is just organized by use. You can see here, uh, if we zoom in, you can see this has been used 147,000 times. Um, so you can see these are the most popularly used flows. I guess a lot of people want to send themselves reminders in 10 minutes. We're all really, really forgetful, I guess. Um, but hey, it could be useful, you know, or a weather forecast for your current location. These are just fun to test out. It's a fun and easy way to just throw a button on your phone and check it out. So let's actually go ahead and let's let's build a flow from a template. How about that? So to do so, I'm going to search for a particular service. Remember, we can search for a service. So I'm going to do so. So the service I'm going to use in this case is, uh, so just to show you guys, I could search here for just Office 365, right? So if I search for that, I can just see all of these flows that might be related to Office 365. Um, they might have them in the title. They might not. It just searches 
based on the actions, the connectors that are used there. So by searching for Office 365, I can see all these different uh, options. And uh, I actually want a specific one. I think it's actually there already. I, I can see it right now. But um, I'm looking for one with OneDrive. So I'm going to look for this template here. Save Office 365 email attachments to OneDrive for business. So this just allows me to say, my boss sends me attachments all the time. They're pretty important. And I want to make sure that I don't just accidentally delete them or filter out. So as soon as that email comes in, I'm going to uh, set this up so that it automatically saves off that attachment to my OneDrive. I could access it wherever, and I can make sure that it's backed up. So we can uh, just click on this, this template here to navigate to that templates page. And what we're immediately greeted with is just kind of a general overview of that template, of that flow. So it just tells us there, save Office 365 email attachments to OneDrive for Business. So it says you can have easy access to your O365 email attachments. Uh, all attachments sent to your O365 inbox will be saved in a folder. So it just gives you kind of a little description there. And it shows us kind of a general overview of how this flow works. So all these different icons are essentially just the different parts of the flow. And we'll take a look at that here shortly. So this here is where we talked about the connections. So it says it's going to connect to my OneDrive for Business, and it shows my account here. And it's also going to connect to my O365 Outlook, and it shows my account there as well. One thing that you can do, and I, I, think, I definitely say you should do, is actually view the permissions for each one of these connections. This will tell you a bit of information about, you know, okay, well, this is going to read my user profile. It's going to allow it to create, read, update, and delete files. It gives you a bit of information about that connector as well, but this will just tell me, hey, this is what this connector is going to do if you if you sign into it. This is what you're allowing Flow to do on this connector. And we can do the same for O365. So this stuff might, might scare you a little bit, this uh, create, read, update, and delete, especially delete, <laughs> but um, it should only do so if you actually build your flow to, to do so, if you actually make that the case. OK, so at this point, uh, if I had more accounts here, I don't currently, but if I had more accounts, uh, I could swap between them. So if I had, say, more than one OneDrive account or more than one O365 Outlook account, I could swap between them. I would have a little drop down here, um, and I, I could change that. So I'm just going to click Create Flow. And it's going to take a moment here. And you saw those, if you saw those green check marks, it just went ahead and verified. It went ahead and authenticated me there for each one of those connectors, made sure that I'm logged in, made sure that I have access. And right there, it says it. That's it. The flow has been saved to your MyFlows list. It's right there. We can see we just created a flow. We just added it. And it's just already going ahead and doing its thing. So how do we know it's doing its thing? Well, we can test it out. So I'm going to go ahead and actually test this out. I'm going to send myself an attachment. And we're going to see if it shows up in my OneDrive. So I'm going to open up my Outlook. And I will send a new email. Let me just bring up this email window here. And I'll send this to myself. I have an attachment here already, already that I know I want to use. And I'm going to look at this guy. OK, so I have my attachment here. I'm just going to drag this in, and I'm going to send it to myself. Oops, there I am. And I'm just going to say, here is your attachment. And I'm going to send it. And now, if I refresh this page, we will see, as soon as it loads, I got my email. I just got my notification. And we saw here it succeeded. Our, our flow succeeded. We can see that it ran five seconds ago. It took three seconds to run. So let's check my OneDrive, and let's see if it's there. So let's make sure I'm actually in the, the correct one here. Let's see where it's going. All right, email attachments from flow. Very important email attachment. There it is. So when you are using a flow like this, it will actually go ahead and create uh, this, this file for you. And it will 
just create that email attachments from flow folder. You could modify that if you wanted to, but I'm fine with this right now. So there it is, my very important email attachment. That's it right there. So that's just an idea of how we could use that, how we could just take a template and use it that way. Now, uh, if I wanted to take a, a bit of a deeper look here, um, I could uh, instead, actually on the top right, I'm back in my, my flow page. At the top right, you see this edit icon here. And I could use this to uh, look at this flow more deeply. Like I said, you could inspect a, a template and you could kind of get an idea for how it works a bit deeper. So I'm gonna click edit and I'm gonna open up this flow and take a deeper look at it. Okay, so these are all the different actions and, and of course the trigger that were a part of that template. So I can expand or, or collapse these just by clicking on each one of these boxes. So I can expand each one and see, okay. So it's on new email, that's my trigger. It's, it's looking at my inbox folder, it's saying get email, and it's, it says message ID, so it just looks at the message ID, and it's grabbing this information from up here. It's saying include the attachment, and then apply that attachment on the email, just create a file, and then it has a condition here for me. So uh, we'll get a bit deeper into conditions in some of these items later on, but I do just wanna show you guys quickly, if I wanted to say modify this, and I wanted to add a, another function here, I could just click this little plus sign and I could add an action in between or I could add a parallel branch. If I added an action in between, that would just add one right between these steps. I could choose exactly what I wanted to add here. I could, I could just add, say, I wanted to add a, a push notification uh, to, my, to my phone or something like that whenever I get that. So I could say, send me a mobile notification. <clears throat> and I could say exactly what I wanted it to say. Um, but I'm gonna delete this here. Or I could add a parallel, which would essentially just add another string of actions on the other side um, that would just happen at, at the same time, essentially, that both of these items would occur. Okay, so that's how we are, are building a flow from a template here. So let's go, I'm gonna go back to SharePoint here real quick. So testing and troubleshooting. Let's talk about this real quick. So we, we kind of already got an idea of some of the things that we could use. You kind of already saw some of them. But when we're testing and troubleshooting our flows, when we have some issues, um, we want to, of course, test every time we create or alter a flow. And of course, also when issues are encountered, that's, of course, uh, kind of obviously a good, good time to test. But when we're creating or altering a flow, we are going to want to test it to make sure it works, especially if we are, are just creating that flow and then gonna be deploying it out to an organization or out to our business. We wanna test it, right? So uh, there's a couple ways that we could test. We could do it in our flow designer, which is the window we were just in when we went into the edit page and we were just looking at our, our different parts of our flow. We can, we, that's where we, we're gonna test. And you can easily monitor and, and test anytime. You can do so on web or on the app, which is pretty awesome. You can actually go into the editor on the app and modify things there. Uh, and you can test flows through a manual trigger, like we see here. We have the, the option here to perform the trigger action ourselves. Uh, we have the option to use data from previous runs. And we have the option to use data from a connector. So if that connector already has data in it, and that's what you're connected to, it can just go ahead and use that there. So troubleshooting flows. Uh, whenever we do have an issue, whenever we do see a failure, um, we'll get a notification whenever there's a failure. We can inspect that flow within the edit pane, just like we were, and we can see exactly where that failure was. And of course, we can monitor the flow while running. This is definitely helpful for seeing exactly what that failure is. Uh, we can use the data from, uh, from a connector or previous runs. The previous runs especially can be helpful if we know that it worked at one point and then it breaks because we made some change, then uh, we can use that old data uh, and then make sure and see if it's a problem with the data or if it's a problem with your flow. And of course, the community forums are a great resource. There's a ton of information on them. So we can uh, definitely use those as well. We can leverage all those big brains to help us out. Some of the common errors, some of the common issues and codes that you'll see. Authentication failure. This is code 401 and 403. So um, whenever you get an error, you're going to see, and I'll show you guys where you find this, you're gonna see kind of a field that shows you, hey, you have an issue here. 
take a look at it. And it will give you a code. So it usually will tell you exactly what happened there. But if you want to get a bit deeper, you can look at these codes. You have your authentication failure 401 or 403. That's just where when I signed into that connector, I gave them some incorrect credentials, or perhaps maybe that that service is down or something like that, where just the authentication is down. That's something to consider. The authentication on the, the, the connector end is an issue. Then your action configuration. This is your error 400 and 404. You're probably going to see a lot of these, especially when you're starting. These kinds of errors are exactly what you're going to see when, say, you have configured an action incorrectly. Say you have put an output that does not belong into a field uh, that doesn't work. You've added something to that action. You've configured that action in a way that it doesn't know what to do with the information you're giving it. And then there's temporary and transient failures, 500 and 502. These are things you just kind of, there's nothing you can really do about them, unfortunately. This just happens. Sometimes things go down, sometimes things, things don't work. So usually you're just going to want to wait, try this again uh, in a little bit and see if it works then. So identifying our errors. The error details will show up in the flows edit pane, and we'll show you that here in a second. Whenever you just go into your edit pane, you can look at all the different details for each step. You have the flow checker. When you're building or editing a flow, that will give you some information as well, and we'll take a look at that too. So let's go ahead and test a flow. I'm actually going to go back to the flow that we just made, that template we just made here. I'm already in the edit pane for this flow. So if I go back, again, I just got here by clicking on this guy, this little edit pencil icon. So if I click on that icon, it opens up this the flow designer pane, and this will allow me to look at each step. So I'm going to break this. I'm going to make sure this doesn't work. So I'm going to expand my get email, and I'm going to just get rid of this message ID. And then I'll just change this to say from. Actually, no, I'll, I'll wait first. I'm not going to add anything yet. So notice when I do this, you can see there's a red icon here on the flow checker. This is exactly what I just talked about a second ago, this little stethoscope icon. That red guy, it tells me, hey, there's a problem. If I expand this, it says, hey, not cool, dude. There's a message ID. You need to have that in that get email. It's not there. I need that. So if I say, okay, fine, fine, whatever. Here, take from. Here you go. Now it's like, all right, cool. Everything's great. Thanks. So you can just save this, and you're all good, right? There's your flow. But if I test this, and uh, this is where we, we get into testing. In the top right here, I have my test icon. I can click this guy that opens my test flow pane. So I can say, I'll perform the trigger, where I would just kind of send myself another, uh, another email. Or I could use data from previous runs. We already did this once, right? So I could just use data from previous runs. So I'm going to click on this guy. And we can see there's our succeeded run. And I can select that. If I click test here, it's going to try running that flow using what we had before. And you can see there's a red icon here. So green, it, it went ahead and it, it, that succeeded. This part succeeded. And we got, oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, this part succeeded. So it, we got a message here that says flow run failed. Uh, so that's that's an issue, obviously. We have our green icon here that says, all right, we, we got this part. This is good. You, you, an email was sent to the inbox. We found it. We could not get it, though. We couldn't find it. There was a problem. So it says bad request. Let's take a look at what this error is. It is status code 404. So this is exactly what I talked about. When you're talking about your action configuration errors, this is exactly the kind of thing you're going to see. So you can uh, see here the status code 400. <clears throat> and if we scroll down a bit, we see status 400 message ID is malformed. So when we look at the body of our error message, we can see this. It gives us a little more information. It does not like our message ID. It doesn't make sense. So then it gives us all kinds of, uh, of string there that isn't really useful to us. Um, could be useful to someone else. But I know what the issue is because I put in the wrong thing. So I just, I, I just messed this up. So... From this point, this is uh, the notification that we would get if, if there was an error. Um, so it, just because we tested it, this is exactly what it's telling us. It's immediately spitting out, hey, this didn't work. And then with, with this gray icon, all this means is, hey, uh, we skipped this because we couldn't get to it because the last thing failed. So I could either go back to the previous page, or I could click Edit here on the top right. If I just click Edit, that will bring us back into our designer. And then I could fix this issue. I could get rid of the from. I could put back in the message ID. And I could uh, just close that. And now, if I save it again, my flow checker still says we're good. 
I can go back into test, and we can see there's even our, our failed our failed uh, data. So let, let's even try using our failed data. Let's try that instead, because we know before it succeeded, maybe there's a problem with just that when we tried to test it. So let's try test failed. I'll test it again. And it's running. And there we go. It ran successfully. It took a moment to, apply, to do the apply to each, uh, but it, it ran without issue. So that's just a little bit of troubleshooting and testing. Okay, so I'm gonna bring us back into PowerPoint real quick here. And here we are. Okay, so building flows from scratch. We built flow and template, we did a little testing. Let's talk about building a flow from nothing because this is really the meat and potatoes of this stuff. This is the important stuff, right? So we're gonna talk about our connectors, our triggers and our actions and all that. So we have different, uh, these are kind of the characteristics of our flows. We've already talked about this a little bit. Um, but there's hundreds of connectors. Uh, we can we start it with an event or, or a, a manual trigger, and it can perform a number of actions. It has conditional logic, and the cool thing is a flow can call on another flow. So if you have a flow that does one thing in particular, like say this email uh, action, we could have another flow kick off uh, from that. We could have another flow that says, okay, uh, whenever this item is added to OneDrive, then do this, and send me a notification, or what have you. We could add on to Flow. So rather than rebuilding all these steps in Flow over and over, we could instead reference the flows to each other. So connectors, these are our popular connectors. Our most popular ones are definitely O365, OneDrive, and SharePoint. They just work really, really well with Flow. Of course, it is Microsoft working with Microsoft, so it makes sense, right? They, they handshake pretty well. but they work so well together. SharePoint and OneDrive especially, we're gonna be using those here. You could uh, use Excel or something like that instead if you had uh, some of your own your own data source, if you had your own gateway, if you had your own warehouse set up, you could definitely do that as well. But we're gonna be using OneDrive and SharePoint in this example just because they work really, really well with Flow and we wanna show you guys how that is. And then you have your premium connectors. Like I said, this is gonna require Flow Plan 1 or Plan 2. You're already going to have some of that um, you're, you're likely, if you have an O365 account, you should have Flow Plan 1. That's just kind of how it works here. So then we have our custom connectors. You can create custom connectors for Lime business applications. So you could create uh, some custom connectors if you really needed them. All right, so the integration connectivity, like we said, there's tons of connectors. Um, you could, like I said before, you could use an on-prem gateway. You could use a data gateway for use on-prem on data. You could have your own warehouse if you wanted. And then, uh, of course, our, we could integrate our, our custom connectors there. So triggers, we talked about this before. Um, we're going to select a trigger. We're going to select our, our actions. Um, the triggers can run manually. They can run on a schedule, or they can run on an event. So this is an interesting thing here, our data events. When a, a data item is, is modified, created, or deleted, this is one of, you know, this is some of our actions here. Um, so one of the, the interesting things about this is whenever a data event occurs, whenever an action occurs and we reference a service or we, we pull data from a service, we can get that information and, and Flow will kind of hold on to it. We can then reference that data later on in the Flow and we'll show you exactly how that works. Polling patterns. So this is uh, something slightly different here. And polling patterns uh, in particular, they, uh, especially this, this shows you ServiceNow. Um, which is a premium connector. It's pretty popular for service tickets, but the polling pattern is, is interesting. So you could use a polling pattern in an instance where say, if you set up, like say for, for that flow in, that I set up for my attachments, let's say that I got tons of, of emails all the time with tons of attachments and all of them were going to that. And so this flow was constantly running. Well, there's an issue with that. We are limited to a number of runs, a certain number of runs in our time. So uh, we can only have a certain number of runs in a month based on our license. So if I have that flow running all the time, every time I get an, e an email with an attachment, that flow comes in, it'll just keep triggering and triggering and triggering. So that's definitely a bit of an issue. It's gonna use up all your runs. You could instead set up a, a polling pattern that would allow you at regular intervals to check a service. So you could say, all right, well, I'm just gonna do this every morning at 9 a.m. I'm gonna check my inbox for any unread emails that have attachments. And then it could grab all those emails in one run rather than a separate run for every single email that comes in. So it's just something to consider. Definitely a useful, useful uh, concept. <clears throat> 
So uh, billing, um, this is exactly when we, we talk about, uh, I'm not really sure why this is here. It shouldn't, shouldn't be here, but <laughs> we'll talk about this here in just a second. So um, let's, let's talk about the way the data flows. Okay, so capturing data. When we're running a flow, we can capture some data. And it's going to capture that data any, that's used anywhere in that flow. Any of the other connectors, any of the services, it's going to capture that data so that we can then reference it and use it later on. So the actions, they generate data. Actions, they can, they can modify and have outputs of that data. And the outputs will flow from each step, and they are available in later steps. So we can add dynamic content as well. You can use them to select outputs from the previous steps, which is pretty awesome. So to show you just kind of an example of that here, let's say we have our different outputs here. We have our, our file name, uh, our size, and our file content, so our green, orange, and yellow, right? So we have our trigger, and we have our multiple outputs here. So this is just kind of an idea of the way that data flows. Action one, a binary field is going to see these three things. And then the outputs are these two, right? So if our action is only really looking for these two, if, if that's all we give it for the outputs, uh, then that's what we're going to see. But action two, the string would see not only these three items, but also, so we have these three, one, two, three. And those are, those are here, right? That's these guys, our file name, our size, and our file content. But then we also have our count and our title. So our count and title from, this, from the output of this action. So it's going to reference every single one of these steps, and we can get that data from each of those steps. It's definitely useful information here. We also need to, of course, consider exactly what kind of field it is. The string field is seeing these five. A number field would only see size and count because, in this instance, uh, orange is our numbers and green is our string. But yeah, that's just a, an idea of exactly how that data flows. OK, so we've already talked about actions a bit. I'm going to kind of skip through this, and we're just going to go ahead and jump to building a flow from scratch because we're. I want to make sure we, we, get, we get to this. This is, this is good stuff. All right, so I'm going to end this slideshow here. OK, so I'm going to go back to my flow homepage. And I'm going to go to, to uh, I'm on the My Flows page here. And this is exactly where I can see, oops, once again, I did it again. <laughs> All right, so I'm, this is exactly where I can see my, the flow that I made before. So I'm going to, at the top here, click New, click the New button, and then I'm going to click Create from Blank. So I could create from template here or create from blank. So I'm going to click Create from Blank. And you can see here, you can create a flow from blank. And then it says, here's all of our popular triggers. Or we can just click Create from Blank. So I'm going to do that again, Create from Blank. And then here we are. This looks a little similar to when we said we wanted to add an action to a pre-existing flow, right? So uh, now we can see here is our, our, our basic starting point. So when we want to create a flow from scratch, um, I'm going to pull some information from an Excel workbook. And I'm going to use that. I'm going to reference that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, what I'm going to do is actually look at OneDrive. So I'm going to search for OneDrive here. And I'm going to select OneDrive for business, because that's what I have. And it says here, oh, it gives you a bit of information while you're building stuff, kind of walks you through some stuff here. So yeah, I got it. I can, I, can, I know what I'm doing. Um, that's fine. But it could give you some information if you if you wanted it. So I'm going to say here, when a file is modified on OneDrive for Business, that's our trigger. So whenever a file is modified on OneDrive for Business, and then I can add a unique identifier here. So I'm, I'm going to select my folder. So whenever I click this, this folder icon here, that will allow me to browse through my OneDrive folders. I'm already signed in, so it's allowing me to just go through here. So if I go to my, oops. Let me open this again. All right, so if I go to my, say, intro, uh, intro to flow, or no, I'm sorry, my Microsoft Flow folder here. Oh, I don't have any items there. It's confused. OK. So if I, I'm just going to go to my, wow, it's looking at the wrong, wrong location here. All right. That's okay. So instead, 
Um, so I have I have a, an Excel file here, and I have it with with a table on. It. I have these these columns. Um, this just shows kind of a, a for a um, this is looking at a, a Power BI dashboard here, and it's looking at whether or not um, there there was an issue. We got a notification of hey there was an issue. The dashboard isn't updating. Uh, it was submitted by this user, and it will let us know whether or not it was completed, whether or not this uh, this change was made and it was updated. So that's exactly what I'm going to look at here. Um, and when I, I'm going to save this. I don't know why it's not showing up in my OneDrive. So let me make sure I'm good here. It's there. All right. Let me close this. Maybe that's messing with it. And then we'll we'll try this again. Okay. We'll just try the root here. Maybe it'll find it there. Because I think no, it should be in that Microsoft Flow folder. All right. Well, I'm gonna work through this as quick as I can for you guys. It says I have no items here. That's fine. We'll just select this folder here. Okay, so now we're going to add another step. So it, it should find it there. Um, that's fine. All right, so now I'm, I'm going to add an action here. So whenever this mo this file is modified, um, and it's this this OneDrive, whenever this this file in, in my OneDrive folder is modified, then I want it to, uh, to, to let me know. I want it to, to do something. So uh, for an action, uh, I'm going to uh, add an Office 365 Outlook. So I'm going to have it send me an email. So let's search for Office 365 Outlook here. So I'll select that connector. And I'll say send an email. So here I can just specify exactly who I want it to be sent to, where I want it to go. So. I'm going to have it just send the email to me. I can hard code it here. We could actually use it to reference, um, uh, say, whoever input it. If we had a column, say, whoever was the manager of, of that uh, dashboard or something like that, then we could have that there. But we don't have that. So I'm just going to put myself. That way I know I can see uh, that email. All right. So then my subject, I could just put whatever I want in here. And you can see I can. it, it brings me up there from Office. And uh, I, I can just select that. So the subject, I will say, um, I'm actually going to uh, reference something here. So this is exactly where we can see the dynamic content here is referencing our item above. So it knows I have OneDrive here. So when I select this, it'll say, all right, do you want to use some dynamic content from the other apps and connectors using this flow? I can look and see these all have that OneDrive icon. So I know that this is exactly uh, what it's looking at is OneDrive. So I'm going to say file name. And I will say something like has new records for processing. And then I'll, I'll give it a body as well. And in the body, I will uh, actually just say, um, let's say here, dashboard. And this is exactly where. I really need it to reference that Excel. We'll just say dashboard has an issue. We'll just say that. That's fine. OK, so whenever this file is modified, uh, again, for some reason, it couldn't find that file there. Not exactly sure why, um, but we'll just roll with it anyway. Um, it's going to send me an email. So if I, uh, I click Save here. Now, if this were working, I could have a lot more contextual information here. I could actually be referencing that Excel, and I could be referencing the different columns in that Excel workbook. Um, but for some reason, it's just not seeing it, so I'm not able to actually show you guys that, which is which is frustrating. But that's all right. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to click Save here. And you can see our flow checker is clear, so everything should be good. We shouldn't have any issues. And now I can click Test. So I haven't actually given it a, a trigger. I haven't 
actually gone in and added any new information. And I could do that. I could just go to this Excel file, uh, and I could update it, make some changes, and that could test it. Uh, but instead, I just want to say, no, I already have some information on the Excel file there, so just go ahead and use that data. And I'm going to save it and test. So now it's going to use that. It's going to run through this. And it ran successfully. Cool. So we know that it works. Awesome. So we could use that. I actually got my email here. I'll open it so we can see it. And there it is. Uh, it says here, Fabio dashboard updates that XLSX has new pro records for processing. The dashboard has an issue. So it did see the file there, which is good. But for some reason, I couldn't reference it. That's all right. OK. So uh, that's how we made something from scratch. Now, real briefly, I know we're, we're, we're running out of time here, but I want to show you guys. Um, so this, these are, this is just an idea of the plans and pricing for Flow when you're getting into this. Um, you have your Flow for Office 365, which is free. Uh, if you, if you have that, it's totally free, it's totally fine, and you'll get 2,000 runs per month. You have unlimited flows. You can make as many flows as you want. You have your, your five minute, you, you, can, you can run a check every five minutes, uh, and you can connect to the embedded O365 or dynamic services. That's, that's mostly it. So you don't get the premium connectors there. When you move to a flow plan one, you get 4,500 runs per month, and you get unlimited flow creation, of course, just the same as before. But you can perform checks every three minutes, and you get some premium connectors there. And then with flow plan two, it just ups that number of runs to so 15,000. You get one minute checks. And you have you can set some organization policy settings. And you can have the business process flows we talked about briefly before. So you can look in the fact here, and it'll give you some information. These are the different plans that include flow. So if you already have uh, 0365, any of these 0365 plans, that will include flow. So if you already have business essentials or premium, if you have education or education plus or enterprise, enterprise, excuse me, one, three, or five, you will already have uh, flow. So if I uh, scroll down a little further here, you can get a free trial for 90 days, uh, but of course the the free trial will be a bit limited. There is also something known as a, a community flow uh, login, a community flow account. You can use that; it's basically a free flow account. However, um, you should be aware that, that there are some limitations there in that you cannot share or publish any of your flows. It's really only for you to use yourself internally. So you can't share or publish anything uh, with other users. So this is just kind of what comes with those, those different plans. Um, these are all the features that come with it. So this is your, your flow free. This is your flow for Office 365. Flow free only gives you 750 uh, runs per month. Um, so this is exactly where we talked about uh, that, that polling patterns and using just one uh, event to to check all those, to one run to, to check all those emails. So uh, that's just a bit of information about the accounts. Um, and yeah, so I'll, I'll get back to my, my slides here and we'll, we'll wrap this up, guys. All right. So thanks so much for coming, guys. I really appreciate uh, your attendance. I hope you guys learned some stuff. Um, I, I know we kind of we rushed through a couple of things there, but we just kind of jumped into the basics of making a flow from a template, making a flow from scratch. How how can we troubleshoot it and stuff like that? There's a lot more information in that we could get into with Flow. There's a lot more to learn and way more that we can do. So please go go play with it, go dig into it, especially because you can get it for free and you can just mess with it and see exactly uh, what you might want to use it for, what you might want to get out of it. You can look at those templates and see. There's all kinds of use, especially for uh, things like, of course, your typical business use cases, but also maybe social media, Twitter, Facebook, things like that. It automates so much for you. So go check it out. Play with it as much as you'd like. Learn some things and uh, try to see how you can work less and do more. All right. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I don't know if you want to take a few minutes because I know you guys are running a little over and answer some of the questions that you have in the chat, but it's completely up to you. Uh, absolutely. I uh, I don't see any messages in the chat currently. Okay, so if you go, if you look over there on the right hand side, um, you'll uh -huh. see the questions tab. It's right under. It's yep. right under the poll. Okay. For some reason, it's just not really showing. It's. Um, if you take the the little um, square squished. with the arrow, if you hit that, yeah, it'll expand. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna expand it here. Okay. 
All right. Okay, sorry if the uh, the audio was choppy there. Um, I hope you guys could understand me the whole time. I just, I, for some reason, I didn't, uh, I didn't see this this pain. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yes, Flow does have a trial license. I'll just start from there. Um, so, Flow does have a trial license, Russ Morris. Um, you you have that that free license, which uh, we talked about briefly there at the end, and uh, you could definitely just play with Flow there. Uh, so you got Flow free. Also, if you have O365 or Dynamics 365 through one of those, you could definitely use Flow as well. Um, a Logic app, uh, Russ, is is a different. It's kind of like a Flow. It's actually a, a different product, a different service, and it works similarly to a Flow, but it's definitely a bit deeper uh, into the development stages there. So if you uh, we do actually have some courses on Logic Apps as well. So if you'd like to look through, I, I believe we might even have some, some webinars that were on it. So you could definitely check that out as well. Um, is there a connector for TFS? I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to look and see. There very well may be, uh, Jim, Craftjack, uh, but I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, OK. Let's see here. All right, so uh, Mehdi, uh, Mehdi Hamadi, uh, pardon me if, I, if I'm mispronouncing that, um, at, they, they just said, from time to time, my connections just turn off and I have to refresh them. I know that for my O365 account, I have to update the password, but what about LinkedIn and Blogger, for example? Is there any policy regarding that? Um, policies as far as uh, the, the connections just kind of turning off um, and having to refresh them. Uh, unfortunately, it, it seems like that, that does happen sometimes with your, your services. Um, the, the connectors, they, they can get disconnected. I'm not entirely sure why that happens. It, it could just be an issue either in flow or it could be an issue with the connector itself. Um, usually it should say, should say logged in. You should usually say logged in your connectors. It should be fine. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, sometimes stuff like that just happens uh, and hopefully uh, it doesn't happen too often to you. Um, okay. Regarding swapping between accounts and taking the template to save attachment to OneDrive, can we have two branches, the first one to save to one account and a second to a second account? Um, that's actually, that's a great question. I haven't tried doing that, uh, but I can definitely try and um, we can follow up with you guys. Um, definitely, if you if you want to, to get some feedback from some of these, these questions, reach out to me, send me an email, um, tweet me, anything like that. I'd be happy to follow up with you guys um, and, and look deeper into some of these questions. Uh, is the gateway the same as the Power BI gateway? Uh, Jerome Lavelle, uh, he has left, but I will answer this question. Yes, the gateway, you can use the same gateway that you set up for your Power BI. Um, you can absolutely use that if you'd like. Okay, let's see. Yep, yeah, I think Tally Smith was correct there. It was acting for a folder ID, not the items in the folder. Um, but for some reason, it, it just wasn't seeing uh, the actual item once I got deeper into it. Uh, so for some reason, I, I still couldn't reference that Excel. I'm still not sure why. Sometimes, again, this is a new software. Um, I did play with this just a couple days ago and made sure that this worked. But uh, sometimes things get wonky. So it just wouldn't let me reference that Excel. OK. Uh, it's possible for a system admin to see all OneDrive folders, not just their own, in case a business critical folder or file gets deleted or moved. Can we set up a notification to alert? Uh, Russ Morris, I believe that that would really kind of just depend on how your account is set up in OneDrive and how O365, uh, you, you would you'd probably have to make sure an O365 admin set that up for you to make sure that you were able to, to do that. Uh, OK. What does a temporary transient failure mean? The temporary transient failures, those that's just sometimes things just go awry. Sometimes for some reason uh, there's just errors, there are just some problems, uh, and for some reason it, it just won't work. Be, it could be a connection issue, it could be 
um, just an issue on the, the service side. Maybe that, that connector is down for some reason. It could be uh, almost anything. Um, again, I would usually just recommend um, just trying again in a little while, trying again later. That question was from Iris. Uh, yeah, so, all right. Uh, Iris had another question, 750 runs, that's per month. So if you have a free license, a free flow license, it's 750 runs per month, um, and then it goes up from there. So you do have 750 runs. If you do kind of use that, um, that polling like we talked about and you were smart about it, you could get quite a lot out of those runs, but you are limited to that for the free. Uh, Fei Fu, again, apologies if I'm, if I'm mispronouncing that. Will this session be available to review? Yes, it will be available to review. Uh, it will be on our website. Uh, we're recording it as we speak, so you'll be able to review it there. Okay, uh, Daniel Elliott, how tightly coupled are the flows to the user who built them? Imaging an enterprise scenario where someone develops a flow, deploys it, and leaves the company? That is a great question. Uh, it's actually definitely, so this is something that I, I would have talked about if I had more time um, when we talked about sharing, if, if we were to talk about sharing flows and things like that. When you create a flow, you are considered the owner of that flow. You can add other users of that flow, or you can add owners. So it is always a best practice if you're building a flow for an organization to add other owners to that flow. That way you could uh, make sure that if something like that happens, someone still has access to the flow to either edit or delete or, or alter it in any way. So you don't completely lose access to it. So they're definitely coupled to the users who built them. You gotta make sure that you usually want to add a, another user or another owner, excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, John Keegan asked, uh, can I create a flow that reviews transactions in my SQL database then automatically sends an email when a transaction date does not meet criteria? So does, if transaction date is greater than today, then send email. Absolutely, John. Uh, you can definitely, uh, SQL is uh, a, a very popular connector in flow. So you can definitely use some uh, some your different SQL databases, um, however you'd like, to, to connect that information and bring back and uh, kind of warn you of, of an, uh, an issue like that. Tanya Jackson asks, regarding pricing, who does the user license apply to, the builder of the flow or anyone that may trigger a flow? Um, it will actually, yeah, it will apply to um, pretty much anyone who uses the flow. So if you're trying to use flow in any way, you, you do require, you are considered a user and you will require some kind of license. Of course, the free license is there, um, but those runs are based on who is, is triggering that flow. So if you are, uh, Although it is it is kind of attributed to that user, however, let's say that if you were in more of an enterprise situation um, and you had a certain number of runs, which if you were to watch our introduction to Microsoft Flow course, you would get a lot more of this information. Of course, we just kind of jumped through it really quick to give you guys the basics. But um, if you were to get into more of an enterprise situation, those runs are actually shared among your organization. So uh, every time that flow is run, uh, that's exactly why we talk about, say, those polling patterns, where if you set up a flow that is just very heavy, it's going to run over and over and over, then it's going to use up those runs. And that's not only going to use it up for the person who created and is running that flow, but for anyone else in that organization. So you need to definitely consider that. It's very important. Okay. Um, for anyone else, I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. If, uh, if you really want, want me to answer your questions, please absolutely reach out, send me an email or tweet me or reach me on LinkedIn or on my blog. And I'd be happy to, uh, to follow up with you guys. So thanks a lot for, for checking out our course. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. All right, awesome, Daniel, thank you. And like Daniel said, this will be recorded and will be up on the website maybe later today, but no later than tomorrow. And you guys will also receive a link in your email with the um, webinar in there. So like Daniel also said, if you guys have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to me or Daniel. Um, and thank you guys so much for joining. And Daniel, thank you so much for hosting. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks, you too.